Hi everybody, this is an excerpt from our 3D Model Mastery course where we take assets from Blender and move them over into Unity. I'm your main instructor, Michael Bridges. If you'd like to find out more about this course, stay tuned at the end of this video and also follow the links in the video description. Enjoy this video. Hello and welcome to Normal Maps. In this video, we're going to discuss how a normal map is a type of bump map. What does that mean? Well, it means that a normal map is a way of adding surface detail that's not there in the geometry. So there's no 3D information here, but with this texture called a normal map, we can make the surface bumpy, we can fake detail. Now we will generate our normal maps from one of our existing black and white images that we've already created. And we can also use that as a height map in a bit as well. Now each texel of a normal map represents a deviation from the face normal. So if you imagine the, the usual triangular face that you might have, there's a normal that points at 90 degrees straight away from it. Now each texel of a normal map represents a deviation from that particular face normal. Now What's a texel? Let's have a look at texels. It's quite simple once you get your head around it. To avoid confusion, the pixels of an image that is used as a texture are known as texels or texture pixels. Pixels are used to define the rendered output. It can be a bit confusing, but what it does do, it's a subtle difference, but it does help better separate what you are talking about. When you say texels, you are talking specifically about the pixels that make up the texture itself. Nothing to do with the rendered output. So why use a normal map in the first place? Well, normal maps bake detail that would otherwise need a lot of geometry to make. Whether that be little dimples in the surface or indeed take an object like a tree with its bark. There's lots of undulations as the bark gets split in places, it's bumpy and others smooth. Well, with a normal map, you can fake quite a bit of that geometry. Now, you can't fake absolutely everything. It will at some point break down. However, we can use height maps as well to kind of push that a little bit further as well. But we won't deal with height maps. We'll just focus on normal maps. Ultimately, it is an optimization and it's fake as well, and we'll see where it breaks down. So let's go play with normal maps now and hop on over into Unity. Okay, so we're back over in Unity here. I'm just gonna make sure my inspector is showing on the right-hand side. We've got nothing to inspect at the moment. How did we leave this last time? Well, we left it when we were playing about with the normals themselves, the face normals. Now I'm going to purely focus on these front objects here. Now we will have a problem with these front objects here and that is that they're not unwrapped. So we need to make sure that that is done first. So let's hop over into Blender and make sure those objects, or indeed create two new objects the same, that are unwrapped. Okay, so over in Blender, I'm not gonna open that file and modify it. I'm simply going to delete my cube and add in an icosphere duplicate the icosphere with shift and D. There we go, we've got R2 and I'm gonna set it to smooth shading. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm just going to unwrap with a smart UV project. It won't be the best unwrap in the world, but it'll be unwrapped, good enough for our purposes. I'm going to hop into edit mode on the other one as well, press U to unwrap and then another smart UV project, okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save that and make sure I save it in our working folder. So texture test, assets, and I'm gonna call this normal map, um, N-O-R-M-A-L, normal map. There we go, that's saved. If we go back over into Unity and we go to our assets folder, we should have one called normal map, excellent. So I'm gonna get rid of normal test in the hierarchy and drag normal map into the hierarchy and there we have our two spheres again. Excellent. Now because they're unwrapped, we can actually add textures to them. So let's go to our textures. Well, let's create a material. Let's see what if they've got a material on them at the moment. They've both got an unnamed material associated with them at the moment. So we can go to our materials folder, find unnamed 
and I'm going to rename that by clicking again and I will call that normal map. Okay, with the textures, so I'm gonna open up the normal map and make sure it's appeared in the inspector. We can see here we've got the option here for a normal map. And I'll show you what happens when you do it wrong, first of all. Because it kind of makes sense that, oh, well, let's take any one of these. I like the cloud-like one. And I, oh, I've clicked on it. So if you click on it, it's gonna disappear. So let's go back to our material normal map. I want to click and drag that over to where it says normal map. Now, when I let go, it says this texture is not marked as a normal map and makes it look a bit funny. That's not what we want. So let's just click fix now. It still doesn't look right. And if we have a look at the image itself, TX03 example, it's gone this yellow and blue color. That's wrong. That's not what the normal map should look like. In Unity, we use a normal scheme called tangent space normals, and it shouldn't look like that. In general, it should look kind of bluey purpley in color. I know that's an odd thing to say. You'll see in a moment. So if we now click on the texture, and go over to the inspector. I'm just gonna make this window a little bit smaller. We can see that the texture type is a normal map, which is great. There's lots more options in this drop down, but we do want it on normal map, so it's done that correctly. But what wasn't selected before is creating from a gray scale. So now that's ticked, we can go ahead and hit apply. And here is that, what I was talking about, the pinky purpley blue color that we were expecting. Ah, now this now looks like a rock that's dented all over the place. That's much better. Now, depending on the UV mapping that this is actually done, I don't know what it looks like, but that will change how it appears. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. In fact, we can separate it. If you click and drag the scene tab, we can separate it out. Oh, I'm having, there we go. <laughs> A few troubles there. There we go, that's now full screen. And if I hold down Alt, I can look around and orbit the model. Uh, there we go, that's a much better scene. So we can see here with the faceted, it's a bit ugly. And indeed where it's put its seams in with this unwrap, it is a bit ugly. But what we can see here, and the advantage of a normal map, despite this not looking great, I'm gonna pop this back in, now we've seen it a bit larger. Uh, let's pop it there so we're not taking up too much space. Dear, window management when you're on a lower resolution is not fun. That's as big as I can make that window. Okay, so now if we select the directional light in our scene and just hover over one of the rotational coordinates. So we've got here 50 minus 30 and zero. If we hover over the X, Y, or Z, you'll notice that you get the double headed arrow. Now we can actually move the light by dragging it around. And you can see here that shadows are forming on the surface of our model. And that's exactly what a normal map is doing. It is perturbing those normals, deviating them, so it looks like there's actual detail and crevices that are in our model. Now that's a great start to playing around with normals, and this is a great test. By moving that lamp around, you can see the areas that were once highlighted. Can we zoom in here and have a quick look? So this area here, whoop, wobble, wobble, wobble. So this area that I'm circling is currently highlighted with a shadow on the other side. So that implies that it's concave, it's facing inwards and this is one side and this is the other. Now as I rotate that light you will see that one area, oh let's rotate it the other way, it goes all light and then it swaps around so the other end ends up in shadow. So it does look as if the object has deformation there. But of course this is just pixels making that deformation, there's no change in the geometry. And there is no change in the geometry, and we can see that because what normal maps cannot do is hide occlusion, so where these edges are. Now, as I say, the unwrap of this is not brilliant. There are sharp divisions, and ideally you want those divisions to be where you can't see them. But we can see here the occlusion, the edge of our shape. It's quite apparent that there's no inward-facing holes in our model. And also, if you manage to get your model at an angle, so I'm gonna hold down Alt again to try and orbit, and left mouse button, it's not quite orbiting where I want it to. Oh, I was orbiting the center one, so let's have a look at that. If we have a look at a glancing angle, it then becomes obvious that that is not, there we go, if we, 
even just here, you can see that's not really going in. And that can also make a difference depending on whether light is shining on this object. So if we go back to the directional light with this close-up look and just move it round, you'll see that once the light has disappeared, it looks quite flat. Whereas when the light comes back round, it does have the illusion of detail. But when you're up this close and you've got this glancing angle, it's much more difficult to perceive. Once you're sort of facing the camera, when the... Um, when the object is facing you and you're moving that around, it looks much more convincing otherwise. And of course, we can have other tricks up our sleeve to play with that as well. I'd like you to go ahead and make some more normal maps. So try out your other images as normal maps. And have you caused yourself any issues? Think about it carefully and what you're seeing on the screen. Are it, one example is, are there any nasty seams causing issue? And also have a look at your textures themselves. Can you see any issues that would be caused by converting these things into normal maps? Pause the video now and give that a go. Okay guys, welcome back. Let's go make some more normal maps and see what some of the implications might be. Okay, so we've already discussed how um, the seams on this model make it look horrendous with the way it has been unwrapped. Of course, we can go and unwrap that in a different way. That is another option. Now, in this particular case, I'm not going to go off and do that. It's a simple icosphere. We know it's causing us a problem. However, what we have got down at the bottom here is an issue with this texture because the black and white version's gone. So it, it would have been better to have a duplicate of that to start with, so we're not ruining the original. But is it ruined? Well, let's go check that out on the disk itself by right-clicking and going to Show in Explorer, or in Finder if you're on a Mac. Now, once we do that, I'll just drag it across because it appeared on the other screen, we can see that it hasn't changed the base texture. That's great, that's exactly what I was hoping it was doing. So this is changing it in the scene itself, actually within Unity. And with the texture type here, this is the import setting. So if we change that back to texture and click apply, it'll go back to its black and white version. Okay, so that's we can switch between those, that's great. Let's try out a different one. Let's see what the waves looks like or even the checkers on this surface. So let's go to the material first. Go to the normal map material, there we go. Now we can go to our textures and just try different ones, can we? Well, it would have been better probably to convert them to a normal map to begin with. That looks horrible, we can't just click fix now. So let's go through these and I'm just gonna switch them all to normal map, create from grayscale. Now you can play with this slider as well. So if you have it bumpiness turned all the way down and press apply, you'll see that these ridges in the surface are quite small. If we crank that up to 0.3, we can see that they're much more defined. It looks, well, much more dented. That, that's, that's come off a bit better than uh, the noise one did. Now you can see, that because this is a 512 by 512 image, as we zoom in, you can see where the resolution of the image starts breaking down. So we can think carefully about resolution of image at this point. If you're viewing it from about this distance, that's absolutely fine. But if you're getting much closer, it's going to look a bit worse for doing that. Now obviously this is just a plain old sphere with only a normal map on it and often there'd be other detail that would hide these discrepancies in shadow as well. So if we wanted to go through, we'd go through and make all of these normal maps and decide on the bumpiness, bearing in mind we can come back and do this at any time and adjust it where we want to. So I'm just going to convert those all, normal map, from grayscale, there we go. So we've got a few to try out there and now we can go back to the material back to textures and start dragging them on to try them. So what do the lines look like? Absolutely horrible because of the seams. The waves, as we saw a moment ago, actually look quite good despite there being some obvious seams there. What do the circles look like? Oh wow, that's kind of cool. So you can see here, and let's try the light as well. You can see here that this is creating some quite nice fake geometry. Ah, oh, excellent. But once again, because of the low poly nature of this sphere, it, 
it's it, the illusion's broken around the edge. So we know here we're probably going to have a have to have a higher polygon model. And finally, let's try this checkers one. So let's go back to materials and drag the checkers one on. Ah, that was a bit bit more disappointing because it's just basically two colors. It's not really showing us much. Uh, the only thing there is there is this crack running through a couple of the squares and that does show up. But no, it's nowhere near as fun as the other textures. How did you guys get on? Did you have fun playing with your normal maps? Did you move the light around? Now that is important. Now, because we're actually changing the properties of that surface and how light interacts with that surface, moving the lights around is a great way of seeing your normal map in action. How did you guys get on? Please share your work in the discussions, especially if you've made your own textures. And I will see you guys in the next lecture. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. Just one excerpt from our 3D Model Mastery course. We've got that and more game dev videos over on our channel. So why don't you go ahead and click the free trial now, join us and let's make games together.